Hello and welcome to this new video on the lesson A Voice for Freedom. It is the acceptance speech given by Ellen Johnson Sirleaf when she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize on December 10, 2011. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf was the president of Liberia and the first female president of an African nation. Liberia is a country in West Africa which was rocked by bloody civil wars in 1990s. In this slide, we see a glimpse of the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony held in Oslo, the capital of Norway. Norway is a Scandinavian country in Northern Europe. Madame Salif was jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize with Lima Bowie of Liberia and Taakul Karman of Yemen. Yemen is a Middle East country sharing borders with Saudi Arabia. The three women were recognized for their non-violent struggle, for the safety of women and the contributions to the peace-building work. Lima Bowie is a Liberian peace activist responsible for leading a women's peace movement that helped bring an end to the second Liberian civil war in 2003. Taakul Karman gained prominence in Yemen after 2005 in her role as a journalist and for leading protests for press freedom. Press freedom means the freedom to openly express one's opinions in magazines and newspapers. She played a key role in the mass protests that took place against the totalitarian regime in Yemen. Totalitarian regime refers to the rule of dictatorship. While addressing the gathering in Oslo, Madame Sarleaf mentioned that she was proud to be one of the many black recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize. She highlighted the names of Nelson Mandela, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Kofi Annan, Barack Obama, Martin Luther King Jr., Wangari Mathai, and others who had won the prestigious award before her. She then mentioned a terrorist attack that took place in Norway on 22nd July 2011 that sent shockwaves through the nation. A lone wolf named Anna's Bering Breivik went on a killing spree, murdering 77 people and wounding 319. Madame Sirleaf praised the indomitable spirit and resilience of the people of Norway and extended her heartfelt condolences for the loss of life that the country had suffered. She also expressed her admiration for the way the country bounced back after the tragedy and maintained its openness to the outside world. She expressed her gratitude to the Nobel Peace Committee for honoring the three of them. She emphasized the fact that the struggle for peace was universal as people in different parts of the world were suffering oppression under military or dictatorial rule. In this regard, she highlighted the role of women Nobel laureates we had fought for peace, dignity, justice, equality, and human rights. She mentioned the names of Mother Teresa, Aung San Suu Kyi, Jody Williams, Shirin Ebadi, and Wangari Mathai, among others. She mentioned Wangari Mathai in particular 
who was the first African woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. She was a Kenyan social, environmental and political activist. Madame Sirleaf was deeply influenced by Wangari Matha's words, in which she mentioned that those who are privileged to receive education, skills, experiences and power must be role models for the next generation of leadership. Madame Sirleaf expressed a firm determination to become a role model for the youth. In her speech, Madame Sirleaf duly recognized the important role played by countless women all over the world who made immense sacrifices in their struggle for peace, dignity, equality, justice, and human rights, though they remained unsung. Thereafter, Madame Sirleaf turned to the other two joint winners of the Peace Prize, namely Takul Karman and Lima Bowie. She complimented them for their outstanding contributions in the field of peace and women's rights. Next, she gave a brief glimpse of her own life and the people who shaped and influenced her life profoundly. She fondly remembered her parents and to grandmothers who had instilled moral values in her. She had learned from them that it was service to fellow human beings that made life meaningful. She also acknowledged the role played by her teachers and mentors who motivated her to pursue higher education. She was convinced that education was the key to social justice, progress and prosperity. She expressed her gratitude to the thousands of people all over the world who had pressed for a release when she was imprisoned and her life was in danger. Because of sustained international pressure, she was released from prison. According to Madame Salif, her life was transformed when she was elected president of Liberia and was given the challenge of running the country. It was a monumental challenge since Liberia was a war-torn country and she had to rebuild the country from scratch. She knew that Maintaining peace was a top priority, otherwise the country would descend into civil war once again. Later in her speech, Madame Salif mentions the plight of women all across the globe and how they suffer due to violence, abuse, discrimination and trafficking. We will deal with these issues in a subsequent video. Since this video has become too long and taxing, we will cover the rest of the lesson in another episode. Please wait for the next video, which will be made available to you very soon. In the meantime, keep in touch with your textbook. Let me remind you that there is no alternative to the textbook. Please read the lesson to gain deeper understanding and appreciation. You can honestly and fearlessly express your opinions in the comment section below. Since the pandemic is wreaking havoc everywhere, take adequate precautions and stay out of the harm's way. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye for now.